The building block of the SV2 is the multi-stream processor, or MSP. It's implemented on an 8-chip MCM, multi-chip module, and it includes four processor chips and four custom streaming cache chips. The four processor chips each provide a scalar processor and two vector pipes, and then the four processors share a high bandwidth streaming vector cache. And there are special synchronization primitives and wires between the four processors which allow them to be tightly coordinated and act either as four independent streams of computation or as one large stream of computation that has eight vector pipes of performance. And then it has ports leading off to the memory subsystem on the board. If you take a look at a board, then, it contains four multi-stream processors with a crossbar to a flat shared memory. The memory is controlled by 16 memory control chips. Each one of these has eight direct RAM bus ports to a very high bandwidth memory subsystem. So you have a system building block that has four of our multi-stream processors and has flat, low latency shared access to the local node memory. What I have here is a, an example of the multi-chip module package. It's 72 millimeters on the side. It's approximately 82 layers of glass ceramic. We have eight ASICs on the MCM. We have four processor chips and four cache chips and approximately 180 decoupling capacitors on the top surface of the multi-chip module. We also have approximately uh, 34,000 connections we make between the ICs and the multi-chip module on the top surface. On the bottom surface of the MCM is the uh, approximately 3,800 connections we make between the MCM and the printed circuit board. So this is the technology that enables us to keep a very tight coupling between the processors and a very tight coupling between the processors and the first level cache. Because of the high power level of our MCMs, we needed a very local, very dense package for our DC to DC power converter. And so with, again, cooperation with a, with a power supply vendor, we were able to get this package down to a very small size and have about 80% efficiency. Another key technology of SV2 is a spray evaporative cooling. For example, our processor chip, because of the custom blocks, we have approximately a 45 watt per centimeter squared heat flux density on, on the pro processor chip. And to get a point of reference, that's approximately the same heat um, flux density that you have on the space shuttle uh, re-entry on the, on the tiles. And what I have here is the spray cap that delivers the spray cooling to our MCM. What you see here is four spray nozzles per processor chip and one spray nozzle for the cache chip. The cache chip runs about 40 watts. The processor chip runs around 100 watts. So as you can see, we have a pattern that matches the MCM. This gets mounted directly onto the MCM. It's sealed and tested at the MCM vendor. Underneath this manifold assembly, we have our, our MCMs. There's four of these located on the node module, and there's four spray caps that go on top of it. The floor inert comes into the manifold into the liquid feed port on the spray cap, and then once it goes through and gets sprayed onto the surface of the MCM and goes through phase change, it comes out as a mixed phase fluid. The mixed phase fluid then gets transferred through the manifold to two hoses due to the change in, in volume of the flow and goes into the return system into the chassis. The spray evaporative cooling technique we're using for SV2 is a much more efficient way to use fluorinate to cool a system. For example, on a T932, it requires about 180 gallons a minute to cool that system. In comparison, a full up liquid cooled SV2, which has 16 node modules, or 64 MCMs, requires only 16 gallons a minute. Another key technology in the SV2 project is, is our compliant interconnect. What was required is that we get the 3,800 connections between the multi-chip module down to the printed circuit board. Each connection and the compliant interconnect requires about 40 grams of force to engage. You add all those up and it requires approximately 350 pounds of force to fully engage the multi-chip module down to the printed circuit board. So what I'd like to do now is, is, is assemble the different technologies, demonstrate how this gets assembled into the module. What we have here is a, a backer plate that goes on the back of the PC board. Because of the 350 pounds of force, we don't want to push the MCM through the, to the PC card. This represents what the PC board would be on the back of the 
that's placed on there. Then the compliant interconnect is mounted to the PC board. This will be permanently mounted to the PC board. And then the MCM, as I stated before, comes prepackaged, sealed from the vendor, and that will then get put onto the compliant interconnect. The 350 pounds of force is then applied to engage the, the compliant interconnect to the PC card. Springs and C-clamps are then installed to hold this in place. We've taken more advantage of our suppliers with SV2. For example, IBM with a multi-chip module technology, the substrate and the chips that are connected to the substrate and the spray cooling, we've really leveraged our suppliers for their expertise. IBM has a great track record for quality and reliability, and that's indicative of our SV1 product. We have, I believe, uh, 8,000 plus hours per system on the average of reliability, which is great for the supercomputer line of products. It's the SV2 air-cooled chassis rejects all the heat that's generated within the cabinet to the surrounding air. In the air-cooled cabinet, we put in four node modules. So if we have more than one cabinet in the system, we'll actually add two router modules that go up in the top to communicate between the two chassis. This is the SV2 liquid-cooled chassis. What differentiates this from the air-cooled chassis? is that all the heat that's generated internally gets dissipated to facility water. There are eight node modules and four router modules in this half of the chassis. It's symmetrical about the center plane, so there's another card cage on the opposite side of this mainframe. We call this the V half, and the other half is called the W half. This is a crate qualification lab. This is a place where we actually test our hardware components. As you can see in the background, we have Lots of chambers to do testing, thermal chambers, humidity chambers. We also have examples of piece part components and large assemblies. On each multi-chip module, there's eight die. Each die has a thermal couple on it, and we are able to monitor the temperature on each die through this data acquisition system. We also do uh, uh, up to 6,000 power cycles. That's our goal for reliability on this system, which equates to about 3,000 power on-off cycles for the field customer.